Good morning and welcome to our service today uh, on this 10th Sunday of Trinity. Uh, for those who are watching from home, we're recording live from, well not live, because I'll have to put it up on YouTube when I get home afterwards, but we're recording from St Mary's Sopworth here in the Diocese of Gloucester. For those of you who, at home who wish to support the church, please go to the Just Giving website and search Badminton Church, all one word. The link will be displayed um, at the end of uh, one of the other videos, but not this one. Our midweek service this week is on Wednesday at Hawkesbury Church at half past nine and will be matins. And next Sunday, uh, the 9.30 communion service is at Larsborough, St Mary's Larsborough, and there's no service of matins, uh, but there will be an evensong at Hawkesbury at six o'clock. Finally, um, it's lovely to be worshipping in this church again after the Covid um, crisis, which we're not quite over yet. Um, unfortunately, we are doing some works to the church, and so we probably won't be able to have a service here for October. Um, but the services will all be on the website, as well as the local magazines. I hope you can find your your way in your prayer book. I'm afraid I can't tell you what page it's on because we've all got slightly different prayer books. But it's wherever it says the order for morning prayer. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquity. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the great heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most <laughs> merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus, you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. 
praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's say the Venite together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hand prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foresaw. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Here endeth the first lesson. Psalm 130. You may remain seated for the psalm which we will say together. Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. O let thine ears consider well the voice of my complaint. If thou, Lord, wilt be extreme to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who may abide it? For there is mercy with thee, therefore shalt thou be feared. I look for the Lord, my soul doth wait for him, in his word is my trust. My soul fleeth unto the Lord, before the morning watch, I say, before the morning watch. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his sins. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15 beginning at the 10th verse. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but that is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father hath not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guiding the blind. And if one blind person guides another, 
both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Then Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his, his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the second lesson. Jubilati. Please stand for the jubilate. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou art the God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. 
collect for the tenth Sunday after Trinity. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty, everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world, and thank God for his goodness. We pray today in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Scottish Episcopal Church, particularly the Diocese of Moray, Ross and Caithness, for Archbishop Mark Strange. Pray for the Church of Ireland, for Diocese of Kilmore, Elfin and Ardagh, for bishops, for Bishop Farron, and for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Denmark, in the Diocese of Aarhus, Bishop Henrik. Here in this diocese we pray for our bishops, Rachel and Robert, Archdeacon Hilary, the area dean David Russell. We pray for Sherman Church of England Primary School, for John Moore the head. We pray today that the church may be an advocate for human flourishing. through initiatives which combat injustice, environmental destruction, exclusion and isolation. We pray that in this diocese we may invest in people and programmes which excite young people to explore and grow in faith. Lord, in thy mercy, we pray for the world, for Her Majesty the Queen, Prince Charles, Duchess of Cornwall and all the royal family, for our government. We pray for all for whom VJ Day yesterday was a day of sadness with the loss of family members or the harm done to people. Remember the Japanese who lost loved ones in the atom bomb explosions. And so we pray for peace in our world and justice between nations. We pray particularly for the people of Hong Kong. We pray for victims of the so-called re-education programs in China. We give thanks for the peace process between Israel and the UAE. We pray for the people of Beirut. We remember all who face the loss of employment in this country. Lord, in thy mercy. <laughs> We pray for the sick and the bereaved. Particularly we pray for Gordon Beresford and David Owen and any others known to us who need our prayers at this time. We pray for Emma and Charles who lost their baby this week. Lord, in thy mercy. And finally, we pray for the departed, for those we love but see no longer.
pray for the recent departed, baby Sophia. For those whose years and minds fall at this time. Gracie Hanson, Phil Hicks, David Beaufort, Hazel Payne. May the souls of the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Before I launch into my sermon, I'd just like to... Um, to publicly thank Rachel and Roddy for getting the church ready for our public worship today. It took a lot of hard work and for all the helpers who came. And um, When you go out, you might see um, a little baby goat called Tulip sitting in the back seat of Rachel's car. Um, I should have mentioned Tulip in our prayers because she's not very well. So uh, go and say hello. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. William Blake wrote, Mercy has a human heart, pity a human face. Today we remember that our faith is not about being the perfect moral example of humanity, but about faith and love, and above all, mercy. As Herbert McCarb, the Dominican teacher, says, the whole of our faith is the belief that God loves us. I mean there isn't anything else. Anything else we say, we believe, is just a way of saying that God loves us. Any proposition, any article of faith, is only an expression of faith, if it is a way of saying that God loves us. Love, as for example Jesus shows this morning in the second lesson to the Gentile woman, Love shown not by what we eat or drink, but in mercy. Behold, the woman of Canaan came, cried unto him, Have mercy on me, O Lord. My daughter is grievously vexed. He answered, It's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. She was Gentile, after all, not of the house of Israel. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus is so impressed with her faith that he says, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And of course her daughter was healed from that very moment. Jesus has mercy on her, a Gentile, even though he tells his disciples he's come to the lost house of Israel. St Paul also speaks of mercy. Why does God permit disobedience, he asks? Why does God allow people to not believe in him? Surely, if God wants us to believe, then he'd punish those who don't believe. But Paul says, in times people have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy. In other words, Even though some have not believed, they have since come.
come to faith, and that's part of the purpose of their unbelieving beforehand. It's a kind of Pauline logic. They are unbelieving in order that they may receive the mercy which brings them to faith. <coughs> so, again, mercy is the vital concept here. We see mercy in the life of Mary, mother of our Lord. Yesterday, of course, was her feast day. She is, of course, patron saint of this church. Mary, who humbly accepts the commission given to her, and then in the Magnificat proclaims his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. His mercy is on them. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Jesus, in the second reading, reminds us God is more concerned with what comes out of us than what goes in, which is a poignant reminder, as we're so busy washing our hands at the moment, um, looking after um, what comes out of us in terms of air droplets. But what good is it if you win the world but lose your soul? Our intentions are what count. God is merciful and forgiving when we confess our sins, our evil desires. He claims that anger is a form of murder, that lust, a form of adultery, slander, a form of theft, stealing a person's reputation. So who hasn't sinned? It's not moral perfection that God requires but a penitent heart and mercy. Just as you will remember, it was the penitent sinner who beats his breast, saying, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner, that our Lord commends. Yesterday was, of course, VJ Day. And amongst other things, we remembered the implacability of the Japanese attitudes towards their prisoners of war. Their lack of mercy their cruelty. And yet from Japan comes that lovely story, which I'm sure you've heard before, of a very beautiful 5th century Japanese vase which got accidentally smashed into a thousand fragments. A general had it restored using lacquer filled with gold. The restored vase became an art form called kintsugi, joining with gold. The object that was broken became even more beautiful than ever. It's a wonderful parable. Seeking forgiveness, we bring before God the broken pieces of our lives, our failures, our sins, and with the grace of God we are restored. The ugliness of our failures swallowed up in beauty of God's forgiveness and the nonsense of our thoughts and words given meaning by God's love and grace. The broken vase is a wonderful image of the way we as Christians see life, is it not? It's also a good image of the reconciliation between the Japanese and their prisoners of war that has seen, seen, been seen in some very moving instances. But that can only happen if we own up to our brokenness, to our shortcomings, to our humanity, which we all have. Then we pray as Christians that God in his mercy will heal us, just as Jesus healed the Canaanite woman. Um, I'm now going to ask um, Rachel to take the collection bag around. Are you expecting a collection? If you're not, don't worry.
all things come from you, and of what only do we give you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray for God's blessing on us and on our beloved families and friends. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. say for the benefit of the camera that next week I think we are going to be recording Evensong.